thank you very much. Uh, tonight, uh, I'm going to go a little bit different direction tonight. I told you last week I was going to get into doctrine. And uh, now, I'm probably going to skip this repentance because we, we talked a lot about repentance. I'm going to probably go to the next one. So if you'll just do that. Uh, let me see. I'm trying to. I think that I think that I, another thing too I, I wanted to mention <clears throat> Sister Hinkle's been doing a job on cooking all of the sweets uh, yeah because you it's like the it's like the tater chips I bet you can't eat just one and when you grab a hold of Sister Hinkle's stuff I tell you what, it's it, it it grabs you, man. It grabs you, and you eat one. And if you don't believe it, ask Frank. He'll tell you all about the Sister Hinkles. <laughs> Sister Sister Hinkle, thank you. It's all made with love. I promise you that. Blessed and made with love, and and uh, we we love you, Sister Hinkle. You just you are a special person around here. I'll promise you that. Well, thank you. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. God's going to heal our body. Praise God. Let's all stand and pray and ask the Lord to help us tonight. I'm trying to get this thing to work. I just printed some stuff out. And I'm having a little bit of struggle here, but if you'll just bear with me just for a second, I'll, uh, <clears throat> I'll tell you the reason why I wanted to go paperless. I've got files and files and files and paper and paper. Y'all remember when you cleaned out my office? Yeah, you just, and that's old stuff. It's not accumulated new stuff. It's just uh, anyway. Um, so I I was uh, glad that I I could actually you know um, do it in this manner. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, as we learn the Word of God, and Lord. We praise you, God, because of all that you're doing and what you're doing in our lives. God, you're moving in special ways. And God, I'm, I'm so hungry, so thirsty, God, for the deeper moves of God. I'm never satisfied. I'm content in the state that you have brought me to but I can't stay there very long. I've got to move to other places in the kingdom. And God, your your kingdom is so spanned so wide and so the height, depth, and the width. And it's just over to think of the depth. time up didn't it Lord we just want to thank you thank you for everything you may be I don't know keep going in and out but we'll it's not your fault praise God maybe not I
Yeah, just in case you can sit it. Praise God. It was just in and out, in and out. I don't know. Praise God. Baptism is is vitally important uh, step in salvation. It's uh, I, I I teach that it's essential um, because of remission. Um, I teach that you emerge in water baptism and uh, sprinkling. They I don't know who come up with all that. Some, somebody came up with it and made doctrine and in fact anything that is changed from the apostolic doctrine is man made <clears throat> some of you carpenters know what I'm talking about if you've ever fooled with wood and uh, it's kind of like rafters you know you take a rafter and you actually appreciate that you take a rafter and you take one the first rafter and you make sure it's precise and you use it as a pattern and you put it down and you've got 15 rafters you got to make you've got some for the left side and the right side and then you've got the uh, back of the rafters that that you tied into and that's the, the one that the runner is what we call it and uh, <clears throat> if you take the second one and mark it, and the third one and mark the fourth one, the fourth one talk and mark the fifth one, by the time you get at the end of your work, after about 15 rafters, you're going to find out you're going to be about an inch long. And, and that's the way it is with the gospel. We, we have a pattern we have we have the word of God to go back to and our pattern is in the acts of the apostles the way they did it not the way modern day churches do it you know I why why do you think that religion changes does any of you know why does religion change does anybody have an idea why why you would think it changes over the period of time, why? Okay. To fit their agenda. Okay. Huh? User friendly and and I, I would say I want to appeal to the people. I, I I'm gonna tell y'all something. And it's the truth. In the congregation, a pastor, when he preaches, he can feel drawing out here. He can feel the drawing of hunger, or he can feel the resistance of the gospel, those that res resist. Some of it comes through body language. Some of it go goes through facial expresses. And some of them are right down, they, they, their spirit is wrong. They project that. And if you don't believe it, I tell you what you can do. Have you ever had? Have you ever been in a real bad mood, and you felt like biting a sixteen penny nail in half? And when you walk in your house, you don't say a word, and the whole family goes, "Why?" Because you have projected something to them. Never said a word. You don't have to say a word. Your spirit will project of who you are and what you are, not what you think you are. I was telling somebody the other day, if you want good, you do good, and you will draw good. <laughs> My pants are driving me crazy tonight. Excuse me. Yeah, you that are on... I just had my uh, things to fall out of my bottoms and they're catching my heels. Anyway, <laughs> I thought I was going to trip there for a second. 
That's what got me so good. So what I'm saying is, is that you can, you are, how do I grow in God? What is it I do to 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 want to advance myself? Let let me say something tonight. It's so good to have a good life. How can I have a good life? I do good. And I draw good to me. That's elementary. If I want to look shabby, I'll draw shabby people to me. Oh, come on now, y'all, y'all, it's the truth. If I want to go around and all shabby looking and my old hair, you know, strangling everywhere and, and don't get a haircut and all this stuff, I, I you know, I'm going to draw. I love when I go on Thursday mornings. I this is how I go, just like this. I don't wear no tie. Don't carry my Bible. I don't do all that stuff. I'm 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 very moderate, but I look nice. And some of these guys, these preachers, come up there with. Uh, they look like they're fixing to go to war. You know, uh, their hair's messed up, and they got old clothes, and I'm not bashing nobody. If that's the way they are, they, that's the way they are. But I, you, you build a name for yourself of, of, of your appearance and the way you carry yourself and the way you look, the way you act. You know, uh, you, you, you do. You build your reputation on those things. This class is not the easiest class because it will it'll challenge you. When I talk about appearance, the way I look, the way I dress, and the way you dress, and the way you look, and, and all this, some of us, just it, it gets us out of our comfort zone when we look a little bit different. But what's wrong with that? Is there anything wrong with it? No, it's just improving. It's uh, the Bible says that man looks upon the outward appearance. I guess you noticed that we painted the church. Thank you, Brother Frank Cockrell. We spent some of your building fund money that you're giving, and I'm going to announce that Sunday. I want to do that uh, between our juking and jiving and shouting and talking in tongues around here. We slow down a little bit. That's okay. And I, but I, 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 I do appreciate. I, when, I want the place to look nice. When someone drives up, I want it. I want it. Uh, I want it clean. I want the the lawn mowed. And thank you, the Carters, for taking care of that. I don't have to worry about it. They, it it's taken care of. Uh, lots of good help. And uh, I told them, you know, I, I like. don't have to be wealthy to have nice you don't have to be wealthy to look nice <clears throat> I'm not against blue jeans I think blue jeans are nice I'm not against that's not what I'm talking about y'all y'all don't y'all don't think that I'm bashing anybody that wears blue jeans and they don't have you know nice shoes on like I have I don't expect you to come here tonight dressed like me. I don't. I don't want you. <clears throat> but I'm just saying, keeping yourself. I want to win souls. But man looks on the outward appearance. <clears throat> People, I, I was I, in, in my studies. In my studies. I, I do a lot of reading, and, and in my reading, uh, there's one book that I reading is retention 101 and it talks about that when people walk in these doors 
the first 11 seconds that they're in the door, they form an opinion about this church. Why? By what they see. By what they hear. Isn't that amazing? That's not talking about water baptism, is it? There's examples in, in, in the Word of God tonight. It talks about uh, the early church. And Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Everybody say, For the remission of my sins, of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Uh, in Acts the 8th chapter, verse number 16, the Samaritans talks about, for as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. In Acts 10th chapter, verse number 47 and 48, household of Cornelius, can any man forbid the water that these should not, everybody say not, not be baptized, which have, which have already received the Holy Ghost. You mean you can receive the Holy Ghost before you baptize? Absolutely. God looks upon the heart. But you, in obedience, they were baptized. So let me continue. So what should any man forbid the water that these should not be baptized? which has already received the Holy Ghost as well as we. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord, then prayed that him to the tarry certain days. And also Acts 18th chapter, verse number 24, disciples of John the Baptist were re, everybody say re-baptized. Okay? Well, why am I re-baptized? Why would I want to get rebaptized? Because sometimes you can get baptized wrong. It's not Bible way. So when you get baptized the right way, which is in Jesus' name, and let's talk about that, okay? So the disciples of John the Baptist were rebaptized. I went to Acts, the 18th chapter, and I, I teach small Bible studies on this. I taught Ken on this one. And I think it really stirred Ken up. And he uh, was, uh, he, I, I looked at Ken, I said, Ken, you're, you're like Apollo. I said, you pretend you're Apollo. I said, you're a good man. You're an eloquent man. You love God all your heart and blah 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 we went through all of that you know and that's what this scripture is talking about here that Apollo was an eloquent man mighty in everybody say mighty in scripture in other words he was not a dummy he was very very uh, knowledgeable of what's going on in the word of God and uh, <clears throat> and came to Ephesus and then he talks about this man was instructed in the ways of the Lord, his fervent in speech, in spirit, I'm sorry, and spake and taught diligently in the things of God in knowledge only the baptism of John, though. He could not go any further than what he was taught. That's what you're dealing with with many people. If you're not taught the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you may not want the Holy Ghost. If you're not taught anything about baptism in Jesus' name, you're going to go as far as you can if someone says, why don't you get baptized in Titus? Well, you will. You'll get to. Why? Because I'm going as far as I can. And so, anyway, uh, it talks about that this man, Apollo, went as far as he could go. And I like the other, and the Bible says he, that he went through the synagogue speaking boldly. And then also here come Priscilla and Aquila. They came up to uh, Apollo, and he says, uh, and pulled him aside. And 
told him these words. It says, Apollo, God, I want to show you a way of God more perfectly. Now, in our, in our day and hour, we think, more perfectly, I got God. I, well, you know, let me just show you something more perfectly. How can you get any more perfectly? I've repented, I've wept, I've cried. I came to God, and I, I was baptized, and, and uh, I, I love God just as much as you love God. I said, yeah, I know that doubt about that but let me state, say something tonight every time you come to church you acquire knowledge of him you gain knowledge of him and, and some things come through just revelation of him wow I've taught Bible studies many times and I see people's eyes get real big. Says, "Wow, I've never seen it that way." I, I tell you what, can I tell you what really excited me? This excited me, really did. And I, I, I was there on Thursday morning and uh, talking to quite a few men, and 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 quite a few of them says, and they looked at me like they didn't have an answer. Says, "Well, we haven't heard it like this." When people do that, you're tapping into something. You hear me? You're tapping into something. When they come to the place and say, well, I haven't quite heard it that way before. And I was talking about, instead of God in three persons, I was talking about, now we're talking about doctrine tonight, okay? I said, instead of God in three persons, let me just tell you what I, what I think. And I says, I, I told him, I says, y'all are all husbands, you're all fathers, you're all, you may be some sons from, you know, you got a daddy out there, you got a mama, and, and you're a son, and you, you got different titles, but you're one person. You're one person, but you play roles, different roles. You treat your kids a little different than you do your wife. You treat your wife a little different than you do your sons and daughters and or maybe uncles and aunts. But your title is, well, I'm an uncle. Well, I'm a brother. Well, I'm a daddy. Well, I'm, I'm a mother. I'm even a sister, even a brother. I've got many titles. I said, all you guys got titles. But you got one name. You have one name. That's the way I look at God. He's the Father in creation. He's the Son in redemption. He's the Holy Ghost in regeneration. He's the same one God. And I told all of them, I said, listen, do y'all believe in one God? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, you're oneness. I blew them away when I told them. I said, you're just as oneness as I am. If you believe in one God, do y'all agree with me that you believe in one God? Oh, yeah. I said, well, you're oneness then. Quiet. I mean, it was quiet in there. I, and, and God allowed me to have the table. Well, you know, uh, what, what are you going to do this scripture where, you know, let us make God in our image. I thought, man, that's simple. I said, God is a, a God. He's an um, uh, I'm not present God. He's, he's, he's in the past. He's in the present. He's in the future. He's on the side. He's on the left, right. God is everywhere at one time, right? Do y'all agree? Yeah, 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 yeah. I said, God reach way in the future. And he reached way in the future. He saw things that nobody else could see. That he had to have blood. 
He had to have a body. He had to have sonship. He had to have something. to. He had to have a redeemer because God by spirit alone could not redeem nothing at any time. So he reached way in the future and he included the sonship. And that's why he said, let us make man in our image. And that's where you get that scripture. I love talking about stuff like this, man. You need to know what I'm talking about tonight. Well, uh, another question was, you don't believe in eternal sonship, do you? I said, absolutely not. You don't? I said, yeah. I said, you guys put it this way, but it's not scripture. I said, I'm not being mean. I'm not being ugly. Y'all know that, don't y'all? Y'all know I love you, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that kind of relationship. I said, you never find it in the Bible. God being put this way. You'll never find it in the Bible where there's God the Father. God the Son and God the Holy Ghost. It's not there. As the scripture has said or not said, and you're not going to see God in three persons in the Bible. It's not there. Not a one of them. Say it. Let me explain that there's no eternal sonship. The reason why I can say there's no eternal sonship is the sonship, Jesus Christ, had a beginning. And God, you'll never be where God is at any time that God's not there. God is in the beginning and... And when you go back there where God is, he was in the beginning before that. You go back a little further, he's in the beginning before that. There is no end and no beginning with God. God was already here. And my mind, in my finite mind, I cannot even con think, conceive in my mind when God became God. If God became God, then he has to cease to be God somewhere. So you'll never find God, the, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost in the Word of God. Because if you did find God the Father, God the Son, God the... Now, you will say there is God the Father. I understand that part. But it's God the Father in the Son, Jesus Christ, through the Holy Ghost, through the power of the Holy Ghost. That's how you say it. Yes. So yes, right. So what what let me let me back up a little bit. So where I'm trying to go at right now is there is no God the Son. If it was if God was the sonship, what died at the cross? That means God died. God the Son died. No, because there is no God the Son. There is the Son of God. And there's no plurals. The only plurals is manifestations of a one God. You can talk about me as a husband. You can talk about me as a brother. But you'll see two different manifestations of one man in my relationship with So it's good to know these things. The Bible says, unto us. Y'all know what Isaiah 9, 6 says? Anybody know? 
unto us a child is born unto us a son is given a son is a son is given a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulders and his name shall be called wonderful counselor mighty god everlasting father and the prince of peace and those are all titles you know why you know why they had to put titles on god back then is because the reason why they had to put titles on God was is because his name was never revealed until he was born. Oh, Emmanuel with us. Meaning Emmanuel with us. Meaning God with us. Did you listen to Marvin Hicks? Oh, Bernard, okay, yeah. It's hard. You know, this this is this is my idea, okay? And uh first of all, I, I never operate outside of love and passion. I let these guys know, hey man, I love you guys. Oh, we know that. Uh, we know you're not here to judge. And they're not here. They, they didn't fight. They didn't argue. They didn't, you know, grit their teeth and get mad at me and, and all this stuff. It wasn't that type of, it wasn't that type. They just listened because I have built influence with them over 17 years. I said, folks, I've got something to say. Just just listen to me. I, I told them that. I said, y'all just need to listen to me. I said, y'all can have the floor if you want it. But I said, ask questions if you want to, and, and, and I'll do my best to answer them. And they did. And uh, it's not it's not a it's not a matter of just judging. I, I I don't like the spirit of judging because nobody's judged yet. It's, we're not living. We're living in a day of grace. There come a day. There come a day when everybody will be judged according to the works that they've done, the deeds in their bodies. The Bible says that. I understand that. But now we're living in a day of grace. We're living a day of mercy, and I, I, I like that. And so, uh, so uh, any questions so far? Anything? Anything? Anybody want to say anything? Any questions? I, I like I like feedback. I'm okay with that. I'm not doing a good job if I don't get no feedback. So uh, we, we talk about expounding the Word of God more perfectly, and then it goes into Acts, the 19th chapter, where Apollo 
was he Priscilla and Aquila watered or planted okay and watered and here Paul comes right up behind it and Apollo with about other, some other disciples came up to Paul and uh, of the upper coast of Ephesus and uh, Paul was finding certain disciples there in the second chapter or second verse of 19th chapter of Acts he asked him a question have ye received the Holy Ghost since you believed not when you believed but since you believed meaning that you can live a span of time just believing without the spirit let me tell you let me tell you the most deceptive thing that you can have people can come to God in such a powerful way in repentance and they stop at repentance and it, it, it can be deceptive because it feels good to repent the feeling is awesome in repentance I don't care if it's in a Presbyterian church. I don't care if it's in a Catholic church. I don't care if it's in a Baptist church. I don't care what. Repentance. I remember, listen to me. I remember in February of 1973, I made my way to God in a Baptist church. I did. I went to that altar and I wept. wept and I cried in repentance God saw my heart it took a while it took a while I was a man of repentance and it felt good did I have the spirit not according to what I just got May of 1980 I mean I got whoa I, I would rather do this I would rather line up with the scriptures and be on the safe side than just live in the operation of repentance if I know that this Holy Ghost is real that's what I told God I said, man, listen, Lord, I'll tell you what, God. God was dealing with me about the Holy Ghost. I says, I don't know. Don't know if I'm going to go. No, 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 God. I I was hurt in my home church. And just don't know if I believe that tongue-talking stuff or not. Don't know about that. told God that I'm serious then I come down to it I said okay God tell you what I was bargaining with God but he liked it on this time I said, tell you what God if this is real if it's genuine if this tongue talking stuff that everybody's talking about that's real if it's the real genuine stuff, I'll tell you what, God, I want it. I'll take it. But if it's not genuine, if it's just jabber, jabber stuff, I said, God, I'll walk out of that Pentecostal church and I'll never come back again to a church because I've had my belly full of it. i I just come out of a church that the, the, the pianist was having some kind of fling with the preacher and, um, and I just quit church over it just, I was wasted just wasted stayed out about two to three years just decided to sell I'll smoke my dope I'll just do my own thing I'll just enjoy my life the way I want to enjoy it and I enjoy it 
I sinned. And I did good. I smoked lots of good pot. I did my own thing. But when I met God, it was better. Better. It was better. It was a whole lot better. It was worth giving everything up for. Uh, Y'all grinning at me, ain't you? Well, and it goes on to say, have you received the Holy Ghost? Eh, you know, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And then Paul addressed them. He says, they said, well, we don't know what you're talking about, this, this Holy Ghost you're talking about, you know. We never heard of this Holy Ghost. He says, well, you were under John's ministry. John's, he, John, John baptized you unto the baptism of repentance. So when, when the... So when, when they heard this, they were, they were rebaptized. They were rebaptized and baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Why wasn't they baptized in Jesus' name beforehand? Because Jesus never died. He it was on the other side of the dispensation. Someone said this, another question. Well, you know what, uh, these thieves on the cross. Uh, I've got an answer for you, sir. Uh, you, you, they wasn't baptized in Jesus' name, and they died, and one's accepted, and the other wasn't accepted because he didn't really want it. And one of them says, and Jesus said, well, you'll be with me in paradise. He said, what about that? I said, that's pretty simple, too. Baptism in Jesus' name was never required on the other side of the cross. But I tell you what was required. You bring your best sacrifice, your best animal sacrifice, to roll your sins away for one year. And that was required on that side of the cross of Calvary. Now, I will say this. There wasn't as much as that, but John says, I'm going to baptize you unto the baptism of repentance. There was a new, uh, there, was a, there was a wave of getting yourself, getting prepared. He says, I'm leading you toward what you have to do in the future. There's going to be coming one after me. John said this. John the Baptist said this. There's going to be one that's going to come after me that he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. John the Baptist was a forerunner of the message. Of this Holy Ghost baptism in Jesus name message so he rebaptized them y'all stay with me I'm on the 6th verse 19th chapter of Acts and when Paul had laid his hands on them the Holy Ghost came upon them and they spake in tongues and prophesied it's amazing that these people received the Holy Ghost by the laying on of hands and all these men were about 12. And this, let me just say this. They were, they were about 12 in the 8th verse. I like this. Now listen to me. The 8th verse of the 19th chapter, he went into the synagogue, spake boldly for the space of three months, disputing and persuading. Uh, what were they disputing and persuading? Asked you a question. They went boldly. What was disputed and persuaded? The things concerning the kingdom of God. That's what the persuasion was about. That's what the disputing was about. Now, verse number 9 is a good, 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 good scripture. 
Verse number 9 says this in the 19th chapter of the book of Acts. And when diverse was hardened and believed not, but spake evil of that way. What way were they speaking evil of? The more perfect way. So that don't it don't count it uh, unusual today for someone not to like your gospel because it is not modernized. It does not fit the mold of the modern gospel of today but it does fit the mold of the apostles' doctrine in the book of Acts. Remember cutting the two before? The pattern, keep the same pattern, keep the number one pattern. That's what we intend. The Bible says contend for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. So, Bible says also in Romans 6 4 therefore we are buried with him everybody say him by baptism under the death that as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the father even so we also should walk in the newness of life that's Romans 6 4 you probably see it on your paper there we are buried with Christ Fill in the blank there. Let's talk about Holy Ghost. Part, great, great, great part of salvation. What time y'all have? Give me, I'm going to go... Yeah, yeah, it is. It's awful. A lot of, lot of stuff going on. Part of the salvation plan is to receive the Holy Ghost, the initial sign and evidence and experience of speaking in other tongues as the Holy Ghost gives the utterance. What is the Holy Ghost? First of all, the Holy Ghost, number one, is the promise from the Father. It's on your notes. It's the promise of from the Father. In Luke, the 24th chapter, verse number 47 through 49, and that repentance and remission of sins, everybody say, and repentance and remission. Now, stop right there. What does remission mean? Does anybody know? Washing away. One, one writer says, Baptized in Jesus' name for the washing away of thy sins, calling upon the name of the Lord. The name. What is the name? That's in the book. So that's remission of sins. I don't want my sins following me to judgment because of the lack of the name. Okay, let me tell you all something. You all ready for this? talked about water baptism in Jesus' name. You will never separate the name from remission, and you'll never separate remission from the blood. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes. I'm fixing to get to that scripture here in a minute. That repentance and remission of sins shall be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Does anybody know what Jerusalem is? That's on the day of Pentecost the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, the introductory of the birth of the church. That's where remission, you'll never find anybody's sins remitted before the cross of Calvary. They roll their sins away yearly, annually, but they were not remitted. And the only thing that could remit your sins is the name and the blood and you'll never be able to separate the name and the blood 
from baptism in Jesus' name. It goes together. So, repentance, remission of sins should be preached in my name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I, behold, I, behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with the power from upon high. Acts 1.4 says this, And being assembled together with them, commanding them that they should not depart from Jerusalem for waiting of the waiting for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. Acts 2, 3 says this, For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And also Acts 2, 3, it says it's a gift. Acts 2, 38 says this, and Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. What? For the remission of your sins. And ye shall receive the gift. Everybody say gift. It's a gift. What kind of a person would not receive a gift? If you come to my house, and the other night, <clears throat> the other night I was at, uh, I was at uh, Wendy's. And Brother Ken said, come over with my truck, I'm going to give you something. Well, do you think I'm going to be crazy? I'm going to get a blessing from my brother. If I say, Ken, come to my truck, come to my house, I'm going to give you something, he's going to show up. He should. Well, you know, Brother Chun, I don't think I'm going to come. Why, man? I got a gift for you. Well, I don't know. I just don't know. If I, if I would have just responded to Ken the other night, and he says, Brother Chandler, drive your car around. I'm parking on the other side of Wendy's over there. I got something for you. I said, well, i got to go home. I, you know, I'm tired. I, you know, I'll, I'll just get it some other time. What would that do to him? I could shut him down saying, man, you know, I was real nice, Brother Chandler. Man, I don't understand this, man. Wow. I could confuse his brain. I mean, he, his brain looked like scrambled eggs for a minute, you know? Why did Brother Chandler do me that way? Why didn't he, why didn't he come around? I was going to give him this. Well, I guess he's missed his gift then. Give it to somebody else. No, I drove around there, and he gave me one of those jacks that I like. I, man, one of them kind that you shove under a car and you don't have to get up there and twist and, you know I hate these little bitty jacks so you put that thing in there and you twist it like this here and you bump your you bump your knuckles and you, you can't and they fall over when, when you twist it and turn it goes whoop falls over you know no you just stick that thing up there and you mm, 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 a few times and man you got He said, hey, I bought an next one of these. He said, man, I got a good price. He said, now we'll give it to you. Man, thanks. Wow. Man, I went home. I said, man, I got this jack, man. Didn't mean much to her. You know. Jack what? You ain't supposed to carry jack home. Jack belongs in the pasture. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about, jack. <clears throat> okay. Now, it, you know what? When Jesus Christ has a gift that he wants to give us, then we ought to be satisfied in saying, ah, thank you. Thank you, Lord. I, I, I want the gift. Does anybody want to make a suggestion? Because I'm fixing to turn you loose in just a few seconds. Um, okay, this is a good scripture, and I'm going to end on this. Okay, I'm going to end on this one here. In Acts 4, 11th chapter, 14 through 17, who shall tell thee thy words, whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved? Y'all listen to this. It's good. I'm going to repeat that. Who shall tell thee thy words, whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved? And as I begin to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them as on us at the beginning. Beginning where? In Jerusalem. 
where the Holy Ghost poured out. He says, and the Holy Ghost fell on. It was not just shaking a preacher's hand and signing a church card wrote. That's not the way it happened in the beginning. That the Holy Ghost fell on them as it did in the beginning. That's a good scripture. Then remember I the word of the Lord, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be, shall be baptized with with the Holy Ghost for as much then as God gave them that like, like, like that gift as did unto us who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ what was I that I should withstand God so this scripture right here it talks about how the house shall be saved you know, the Holy Ghost fell on them as it did in the beginning. Then I could remember that the word of God spoke that John indeed baptized with water, but now you, he said, I'm, I'm the forerunner. I'm telling you that you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. And then uh, then God gave them the same gift of everybody that who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to stop right there. Anybody got any questions before we shut her all down? Anybody got any questions? Anybody? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of clarification, she said. Anybody else have anything to say? Questions? Y'all are dismissing? Yes. Speak a little louder. Wow, that's awesome. Now, if y'all want to do a little study, how, how many y'all, how many y'all like to Google, Google and stuff like that? Okay, if if you will get on the gateway, you can copy and paste scriptures. You can find scriptures that you want. Get on gateway, and you can you can go and copy any kind of scriptures you want and paste them, uh, and uh, make your own lessons. You can actually, you know, if you want to look up the scriptures here, or I can give you copies of mine, you know, the teacher's portion. I can do that, too, as well, and because uh, I want to I want to teach you all the Word of God. Well, love and appreciate every one of you. Take this home with you and study it.